Okay, here we are going to see how to use Eclipse CTT, a C++ IDE. Now, when we use this IDE, we want to work with GCC, G++ and Boost. All these three, GCC, G++ and Boost are already present in Sigwin. So when we install Sigwin, we automatically get all these things. Now, we will install Sigwin, we will download and install Eclipse and then we will see how to set up Eclipse for Sigwin. If I go to YouTube, there are many videos which will tell me how to install Sigwin. For example, here if I type Sigwin install, so there are many videos which explain how to install Sigwin on Windows. Just take care that while installing, you have selected GCC, G++, Mate and all development tools. So once you have installed Sigwin on Windows, the next thing to install is Eclipse. Before you can install Eclipse, you need to install the Java JDK. So Java JDK. So this you can download either the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version depending upon your OS. And once you have downloaded it, you can install it. So here you have the Java JDK download. See, accept the license agreement and depending upon your machine, choose either 32-bit or 64-bit, depending upon where you are. Once you download it, double click on the ESC and it should install itself. Next, you have to install Eclipse CDT. So if you just do a search on Eclipse CDT, So here you have to select Eclipse IDE for C, C++ developer. So you can select either 32-bit or 64-bit depending upon your version. So once you have it, then you can click on here and download the required zip file. After downloading the zip file, you just have to unzip it in some directory and double click on eclipse.exe and it will start. There is no separate installation needed. So thus, you should have install Sigwin to install JDK 3 install Eclipse. Now we will see what settings are needed in Eclipse so that it can use Sigwin, GCC, G++ and Boost. While you had installed Sigwin, ensure that you had selected GCC, G++ and Boost. Now, next thing you need to do is you need to keep Sigwin slash bin in your path. Slash Sigwin is the default directory where Sigwin got installed. If you had installed it in some other directory, you need to ensure that you are giving that particular directory here. So now, how to know this? This is in the path. So you say system. So you go to system, advanced system settings. Here in environmental variables, to the existing path name, you have to add Sigwin bin. So here there will be a path. So you edit it. So here, in addition to the existing path, you have to give Sigwin slash bin.
at the end i have given semicolon and c colon backslash between dot bin once you say okay it will get added also for java jdk you need to store this in whichever directory you had installed java you need to create a variable java home and keep that directory and java home slash bin has to be added in the path so this path of java home slash bin also has to be present in your path once this java home and java bin is needed for eclipse then sidwin slash bin is needed for compiling and running the c++ program once you have defined all these variables now you can start eclipse so in eclipse directory you will have eclipse.exe when you start on it you will get the eclipse project so first time you will get some kind of messages when you close it then you can start creating new projects in c++ okay now eclipse has started now i already have a project here but i am going to create a new project so i am going to say new c++ project so here among the various options i will select sidwin gcc because you can have other compilers installed on your machine so which one do you want so i'll give here demo boost we'll go with the default and the project has been created now once the project has been created now i can set some uh, preferences so here in eclipse preferences i can have a setting such that my code will work on windows as well as linux because windows uses carriage return new line and linux uses just carriage return so if i'm going to check in and somebody else wants to work on linux then i need to change the setting so here in general workspace by default it is using the windows format so if i want to use linux i will change this to utf8 and i will choose here line delimiter as linux so text file encoding should be utf8 and line delimiter should be linux unix so now once i apply this and say okay the files can be read even with somebody running eclipse on unix currently i am running only on windows so i will not use this setting for now the next thing is each time we do a save we want eclipse to automatically compile the code so we'll right click on here and say properties in c++ build behavior we will say build on resource save so here and say okay so now each time i save a file it will automatically compile it in the background without it i manually have to build it myself next which version of c++ compiler should be used so after installing c sidwin i will see which versions do i have here so when i do main g++ it will give me the list of versions that i have so here i will say std which versions do i have installed here so in std i have here g++11 so if you want to use g++11 so i need to give that setting here if you have g++14 you could also give that as a setting so now i will go here and again click on properties now here in c++ build my setting tool settings there will be which c++ compiler do you want to use so here in miscellaneous other flag i will go and say while compiling use std gnu++11 so now it will use this version of the compiler i could also have used some other version like gnu++14 depending upon my need okay so now we are ready to write a simple class we will say new class so here i 
can write main one. Actually, I don't want the header size, but so I will just create a CTP file. So new file main dot CTP. So here we can just test whether everything is working fine. Now I save it and it will automatically compile it. So now I can run it. See, it ran successfully. So we press escape. Now we will write a simple program that uses boost. So this is a simple program that uses the boost header file. Now I will save it. See, it is, did not find something. It could not find certain library because I did not give the path. So here I will go to properties and in C++ linker in library, I need to give that path. So here, which one I am, uh, am I using? So I am using boost thread. So here I will say boost thread. Now the bug went away. There are no problems. So now I will run my code and I should get the message. Hmm. I need to give one more library which I forgot to give. So here I also need to give boost system because thread uses system. Now if I get the message, that means hmm, So we need to define main, otherwise it gives error Now I save it and now when I run it, see, boost installed successfully. I am able to use a class which uses a boost header and a boost library. So this means we can now start coding with boost and C++ version that we want. Hope you found this useful.